Adventures in Time and Space, told in future tense. Dimension X. Out of the infinitude of stars and planets in the solar system and other systems in the universe, it is almost mathematically certain that there exist other forms of life on other worlds. Someday, in the future, in a thousand years, or in the next ten minutes, daring travelers through space will make contact with the inhabitants of another world. But the question is, will we contact them first or... Will they contact us? Come in. This is Broderick's private detective agency. Check. My name is Graffius. Graffius of Springfield. I would like to see you, Mr. Broderick. Check. What is it, Dolan? There's a guy outside. What kind of a guy? Oh, a great big guy with a big shining head and thick glasses like the bottoms of Coca-Cola bottles. A- and he looks like a professor or what something. What I mean is, does he look like a client or a bill collector? He didn't say. Okay, Iron Man, send him in. Check. Mr. Graffius, Mr. Broderick will see you. Thank you. Mr. Broderick? In the flesh. Okay, Iron Man, step outside. Check. If you need me, I'll be outside. You'll have to excuse Mr. Dolan. He's a very useful man if you happen to want a house moved or somebody's head unscrewed from their shoulders. His reflexes aren't too good. Hmm. He's what you might call underorganized. I suspected as much. All right, Mr. Graffius, let's get down to business. Precisely. I would like your assistance in helping me locate something here in New York City. Just what are you trying to locate, Mr. Graffius? The Martian Embassy. Would you say that again very slowly? I came to New York to locate the Martian Embassy. Martian? Like in Buck Rogers? Precisely. Agents of the government of the planet of Mars. Dolan! What's the trouble, boss? Come out, he's a crackpot. Of course, if you wish me to leave, I will leave. But before I go, you might examine this. You'll find it quite authentic. Holy mackerel. A five-century note. Let me see that. Uh, Sit down, Mr. Graffius. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. (laughs) Dolan, get Mr. Graffius a light. Check. Okay, Mr. Graffius. Your remarks about our speckled friends, the Martians, I shall ignore. This being the year 1955, I assume you were joking. On the contrary, I'm completely serious. As it happens, I'm interested only in Martians at the moment. Uh, I see. Okay, uh, shoot. It occurred to me in the course of my studies that we Earth people cannot possibly be the only intelligent form of life in the universe. Out of the infinitude of stars and planets... There must definitely, mathematically, be others. Since Mars is older geologically, and since it is also an atmospheric planet, its evolutionary history could easily be similar to ours, you follow me? So far, I can't say no. But if this is true, then they must have been watching us, observing us, for hundreds, possibly thousands of years. What for, blackmail? Shut up, Dolan. They know, then that we are not far from achieving space travel. Atomic rocket ships that can travel to other planets. They also know we're a militaristic, warlike race. We might conceivably set out to conquer and occupy Mars one day. In which case, they'd uh, try to get the jump on it. Uh, Precisely, Mr. Broderick. And how would they do that? For a civilization as old as theirs, space travel would be a simple enough matter. Flying saucers. I read about it. Relax, Iron Man. Go on, Mr. Graffius. If you were planning to attack an unknown nation, what would be your first move, Mr. Broderick? Intelligence. Find out what the odds are. You have a very logical mind, sir. 
He would send agents to scout the nerve centers of earthly civilization and advancement. Not in Kansas City or equatorial Africa, my dear sir, but here in New York City. The most technically advanced spot on Earth. Uh-huh. And, uh, you want me to help you prove this theory of yours? Precisely. Expense does not interest me. Well, this may take a very long, long time, Mr. Graffius. After all, nobody's ever seen a Martian. I assure you, they will be very ordinary-appearing people. Very likely, they live together in downtown New York, close to the newspapers and publishers, the news cables, communication centers, and the financial center of Wall Street. Most certainly, they live in a private house with no servants to pry into their affairs. Some ordinary people who live in a private house in downtown New York. Yes. I might just as well look up Martians in the classified section of the phone book. <laughs> there is one other lead which might help you. What's that? They would be almost certain to subscribe to every conceivable type of newspaper, scientific journal, foreign language publication. Mm-hmm. Well, that might be something. Okay, Mr. Graffius. It's a deal. Excellent. I shall contact you tomorrow. Oh, uh, before you leave. Yes? Just as a matter of interest. Why are you so interested in meeting up with these Martians? Mr. Broderick, I wish to avert the catastrophe of a successful Martian invasion of the Earth. Naturally. I cannot go to the police or the military. I'd be laughed out of existence. So I'm doing this privately. You seem to know all the answers, Mr. Graffius. Not all of them, Mr. Broderick. Not quite all the answers. Not quite yet. Hey, boss. Here's a private address. Takes everything from Pick Magazine to the Manchester Guardian. Listen to this. Pick, look, Scientific America, the Daily News, the Daily Worker, the Police Gazette, the Journal of Engineering, Scientific Quarterly, American Psychiatric Journal. Let me see that. Oh, Dolan. Dolan, sometimes I wonder. What's the address on this? 9 West 124th Street. Which happens to be the Harlem branch of the public library. Oh. Now listen, noodle brain. Check all the renting agents. Find out every private house in downtown New York. And then cross-check with the magazine subscription departments of the scientific magazines. You got that? Check. I wonder. Boss, what's the sense of all this? We know there ain't no Martian embassy in New York. This crackpot is paying us $100 a day and we got to keep him happy. You understand? Yeah. Also, I've got a hunch that Mr. Graffius isn't looking for any Martian embassies. He's looking for something quite different. I'll start making with a telephone. Which house is it, Dolan? Right down there. Number 108. Did you find out anything? Not a thing. I've been watching the place for a week now. Nobody comes out, nobody goes in. I asked around. Nobody knows nothing. Now, you ain't been blabbing around the neighborhood that we're looking for the Martian embassy, have you? Boss, uh, I'm stupid. But I ain't that stupid. Who'd you talk to? I struck up what you might call a casual acquaintanceship with those two girls standing with the baby carriages up the street. The cute one is real cute. Mm. Now, look, Doolin. Don't try to do anything intelligent. Just keep walking up and down. See? Check. I'm going back to the office to meet Graffius. See you later, boss. Hiya, beautiful. Hiya, Flatfoot. How did you know I was a detective? Your socks are bagging at the arches. <laughs> <laughs> well, stick around, beautiful. I'll be back in a few minutes. And we can make some beautiful music together. <laughs> Listen to Romeo, Helen. The name is Dolan, honey. Iron Man Dolan. Your line is getting rusty, Iron Man. What do you want to fool around with him for? He reminds me of my husband. Just a big, good-natured slob. Helen. Helen, look. Oh, hey, Dolan! Dolan, look out! Look out! Waiting, Mr. 
Mr. Graffius. Not at all. Sure. Uh, Doolin found a house down in Greenwich Village, privately rented. Number 108 Conklin Street. Nobody seems to know anything about who lives there, except that they subscribe to every paper and scientific journal put out. And also they have a peculiar antenna on the roof. You don't suppose your Mr. Doolin will try to get inside the house? No, he knows better. Mr. Broderick, I assure you, if that place is the Martian embassy... Doolin can take care of himself. Still, I wish you had informed me before. Well, that's probably Mr. him reporting back now. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Doolin? Yeah, he works. What? Oh, no. No, I can't think of any. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, I'll be right down. Okay, Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, right away. Something the matter? Doolin is dead, Mr. Graffius. What? We found him splattered all over the sidewalk in front of number 108 Conklin Street. He... Oh. How did it happen? There were some witnesses. They said a building cornice dropped on him. The cornice? But how? It fell off the building next to 108, right on top of him. Come on, we can get a cab. I have to identify the body. <laughs> Lieutenant, I'm Broderick. Oh, well, there's your boy, Broderick. Not very pretty. Oh, mother in heaven. That's a thousand-pound hunk of concrete. Where did it come from? Dropped off the roof of 106. Anybody see it? Yes, a couple of maids pushing baby carriages. One was so shaken, we had to send her to the hospital. The other one is hysterical, but she can talk. Can't seem to get any sense out of her, though. Do you mind if I talk to her? Not at all. I'll be back in a minute, Graffius. I'll wait here. She's standing right over there with the patrolman on the beat. Uh, oh, Hanson. Yes, sir? This guy wants a few questions for the girl. Please. I told you what I saw. How many times I got to tell you? Yes, the dead man was a personal friend of mine. Would you tell me what happened, please? <laughs> Helen and I were standing in front of Rathman's candy store up on the corner. We both had the babies up. I worked for Mrs. Gillian on Washington Square North. This... He, he said hello and joked a little. Then he walked down the street just like he's been doing all week. Hadn't taken more than a few steps when... when <laughs> Please, miss. Oh, it's I, very important. I tell him, but they don't believe me. What do you tell him? How it happened. Tell me. It's too awful. Please. Well, well, first he squashed, and then the stone fell on him. What do you mean, he squashed? They don't believe me, but Helen saw it, too. She saw what? First he squashed. Then it fell on him. He was mashed flat before it even hit him. Now, look, that's the story, Broderick. Please, please, let me alone. Let me go home. I told you what I saw. Now, let me alone. Let me alone. Did you learn anything, Mr. Broderick? Huh? I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. It's crazy. Mr. Broderick, if I may make a suggestion at this point, perhaps it would be better if we dropped the entire matter. What's eating you? First you come at me with a chain of nonsense that you're staking real cash on. And now when we hit solid trail, you want to call off the dogs. Well, maybe you operate that way, but Broderick doesn't. May I ask, then, what do you intend doing? As soon as the cops clear out and this place quiets down, I'm going to pay a personal call on the Martian embassy. Whatever number 108 is. <laughs> or ten fingers. I'll drill you like a platoon of rookies. Yes? Oh. Well, young man. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Is the lady of the house at home? I'm the lady of the house. Well, uh, my name is Broderick. Uh, I represent the Manhattan Child Adoption Center. We're soliciting funds and clothing for stranded and unadopted children. 
I wondered oh, if... Oh, won't you come inside? Well, we don't usually... Oh, nonsense. I'm old enough to be your grandmother. Besides, my son, Lauren, is working at home. Your son? He's a bibliographer. He writes summaries of articles and books from scientific journals and publications for libraries and universities. I see. <laughs> well, sit down, Mr. Broderick. We get so few calls, and I do like to visit. Oh, well, thank you. <sighs> now... What was it you wanted to talk to us about? Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I wondered if you or your son, there's nobody else living here. No, just Lauren and I. I'll have to ask him about the contribution, but I'm sure he'd like to. Good. Uh, thank you very much. I'll send a representative to collect. Oh, please, stay a moment. I was just about to have tea. Let me pour you a cup. Well, no, thanks, really. Uh... No, young man, I insist. Well, thank you. <laughs> I was getting awfully tired of having tea by myself every afternoon. You know, I'm not very much of a tea drinker, but this seems to have a strange taste. It's my own recipe. The secret is in the brewing. It's sweet. It almost metallic. It takes a few sips to get used to, like olives. Uh-huh. Well, uh... I think I'd better be running along. Oh, but you haven't finished your tea, Mr. Broderick. I'd better be going. I'm late. Oh, you're not being very polite. Do finish your tea. No, really, I feel funny. Oh, I'll call Lauren. No, no, I'm leaving. I feel I'm dizzy. Oh, I'm sure Lauren can help you. I'll call him. Oh, no, don't oh, bother. But I must, besides, you aren't well. Gee. Lauren! Get out. Lauren! Lauren, hurry! Got it out of my way. No, you must stay. Yes, you drugged my tea. Let go my arm. Lauren! Let go! Oh. Get out of here! What heaven? The other one, that Broderick, he was here. I drugged his tea. He got away. Fool, idiot. Go after him. Use the pressure ray. Risk another murder on our doorstep. Are you insane? But he suspects. We'll have to take our chances. We'll have to think of some other way. How did they find us? I don't know how, but I'm certain someone else sent them. Who? I don't know. I'm afraid to let myself think. It might be them. Where you going, you drunken fool? Please, I... Get away I... from me. Uh, stay awake, me. Look out. Miss, please. Let go of me. I... Help. Please. Help, officer. You don't understand. What's the trouble here? This drunkard is insulting people. I saw him come out of that house there. 108? That's the one. He bumped into a gentleman, and then he pulled at my arm. All right, miss. I'll take care of it. Come along, mister. I'm going to give you a break and take you back to the wife and kids. No, no, you can't. I'm sick. Sick, is it? What's the matter? Drug. They drugged me. Who drugged you? Number 108. Martians. Who? Martians. Number 108. It's a Martian embassy. Well, I've seen them with pink elephants, rabbits, and mice, but you're the first one who's got Martians. That's true, I tell you. Uh-huh. Come along. Now, listen, listen. Don't oh. take me back there. Don't Come kill on. me. Doc, i got to make you understand. Here, here, I'll help you up the steps. Please, my name is Broderick. I'm a private dick. We'll find out about this. Here, don't try any tricks. <laughs> Officer, please listen. I'll give you anything. I'll give you a thousand dollars. Please listen. For God's sake, listen. Listen. Yes, sir. <laughs> what? Broderick. Uh, you know this lush granny? Why, that's my son, Broderick. <laughs> no, no. Martian. He's in pretty bad shape. You better get him to bed. Oh, dear. He was doing so well at the Alcoholic Society. He must have gotten off again. Looks like he's ready to pass out. Lauren! Lauren! What is it, Mother? Oh. Your brother, Broderick, has been drinking oh, again. Nice. Look out! He's passed out. I'll take care of him, officer. We've handled this sort of thing before. Can you manage okay? We'll be fine, thank you. You've been very kind, officer. Oh, nothing at all, Granny. I know how it is with these alkies. Well, I'll be seeing you. Uh, 
Oh, my head. Oh, uh, Mr. Broderick is regaining consciousness, what? Mother. What happened? Oh, I can't get up. Do not struggle, Mr. Broderick. I... It'll be impossible for you to rise from that chair. The pressure from this ray will keep you there. Ray? What? Who are you? You've already guessed, Mr. Broderick. You mean this really is the... Martian Embassy, yes. You have the honor to be the first prisoner of the Imperial Government of Mars. First prisoner? Yes. After the invasion, of course, you will all be our prisoners. Hey, look. What sort of a business is this? No business, Mr. Broderick. As your people will soon find out. Our preparations for invasion are nearly completed now. As soon as we give the signal, our armed forces will launch a surprise attack. And then the Earth will be ours. You're crazy. Not half as mad as you, Mr. Broderick, to come muddling so foolishly into our affairs. That was a fatal mistake. So, Doolin's death was no accident, then? Assuredly not. We found it necessary to use a pressure ray on your friend. The block of concrete was an afterthought. We thought it might help to avert suspicion. All right. What happens now? If you cooperate, you can look forward to a quick, painless death like your friend, Mr. Doolan. If not? This pressure ray has many delicate adjustments. It can move a pin, or it can crush a boulder. Let me demonstrate. You see, Mr. Broderick, as if an invisible vice were crushing you. What do you want? The name of your client... We are interested in knowing who is so anxious to locate the Martian embassy. The names of my clients are confidential. Oh, well. All right, all right. Turn it off, Mother. Mr. Uh, Broderick has seen the wisdom of speech. His name is Graphius. Graphius? Yeah. An unusual name for an Earthman. Describe him. Well, I don't... No, if I really can. Mother. Describe him. He's tall. Got a big forehead. And about 60. He wears thick glasses. He's bald. Lauren, sounds like one of them. Yes, it does. Contact the planet. Tell them we suspect that our plans are known. Ask for an acceleration of invasion day. At once. What about me? I am sorry, Mr. Broderick, but I am afraid you know too much now. In exactly five seconds, you will feel the full impact of the ray which faces you. I would suggest that you relax and meet your fate calmly. Now, wait a minute. You will feel no pain, just a wall of force engulfing you. Listen, I... Five. No, you can't do this. It isn't human. I know, but we are not human. Three, two, one. Are they in heaven? Now. Lauren. It didn't work. Something's happened. The magnetic field is dead. Get it working. We've got to get rid of this one. Now, listen. Listen, you two... I can't understand what's gone wrong with the ray. Why would it suddenly stop like that? Perhaps I can explain. What? Graphius! It's you! Yes. Lauren! Stand back from the pressure ray, please. It will not function anyway. I have decontrolled your field. Lauren, it's one of them. They found us. Did you think we wouldn't? I trust you have not harmed my friend, Mr. Broderick. He's been very useful to me. Brother, am I very glad to see you... Talk about the Marines landing in the nick of time. You're free to move now, Mr. Broderick. I don't know how you got in here, Graphius, but stick around. These babies are really Martians, just like you said. They're planning to invade the Earth and take over. There will be no Martian invasion. You keep these characters covered. I'll get the police. There will be no need for the police. I intend to handle them myself. But the police will... Do not call the police. Why not? You fool of an Earthling. Don't you realize with whom you are dealing... The invasion of Earth by Mars will be like child's play compared... Oh, Lauren! Holy mackerel. They just flattened out. Like your friend, Mr. Doolan. I detest the use of violence where the intellect can rule. But unfortunately, the Martians are a threat to us. It must be destroyed. I believe you now. Another five seconds, they'd have finished me. I'm glad you didn't waste any time. There is little time to waste. The Martian invasion was to have taken place next week. Yeah, I... Hey. They never said that. How do you know? You would not comprehend. Wait a minute. There are some things here I do understand. A second ago, that pressure ray didn't work. 
Now you're using it like it was a toy. How did you get in here anyway? Who are you? Another one of those Martians? No, Mr. Broderick. I happen to be a Venusian. What? A representative of the planet Venus. Venus? That's impossible. Not at all. The Martians are really an inferior race. We Venusians are much farther advanced. As much as we are over you, Mr. Broderick, the Martians would simply have conquered and enslaved your people. We Venusians felt compelled to exterminate you completely. That's impossible. Oh, no. Now that we have disposed of the Martian threat, what is there to stop us? Our invasion begins tomorrow at noon. By nightfall, the Earth will be ours. Brother in heaven. Either I'm completely cuckoo or... Oh. Oh, all this is really on the level. You needn't edge toward the door, Mr. Broderick. You're thinking of running for help, aren't you now? I can read your thoughts quite clearly. Suppose you're going to knock me off like our Martian friends. On the contrary. Go ahead. Leave? Why not? Why don't you try it, Mr. Broderick? Because the minute I turn my back, you're going to let me have it. Suppose you try it and see. I have no interest in stopping you. Go ahead. All right, Buster, you ask for it. It will do you no good. No good! You will see! Here, here, where do you think you're running to? Hey, officer, officer, listen to me. Oh, it's you, the one with the mask. Yeah, that's right. Now, listen. That story is true. They're inside that house, inside number 108. He killed them. Who killed them? Rathius. He's the leader of the Venusian invasion. Venusian invasion? That's right. Tomorrow at noon, they're going to take over the Earth. Now, listen. Go in that house. Martians, now Venusians, eh? Okay, that's enough for me. Come along. Good, good. We haven't got much time. Now, hey, wait. Where are you taking me? Bellevue Psychiatric Ward, my friend. Come Bellevue, on. Bellevue, no! Now, come on. No, why don't you listen to me? Why are you such a fool? Let go of me. Here, Looney is a bed bug. Come on. No! I tell you, there's going to be an invasion. The Venusians are going to invade us. Don't you understand? you got to believe me. you got to believe oh, me. All right. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Oh, why don't they listen? Why don't they believe me? You have just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. Next week, the story of Riesling, the strange blind singer of the spaceways. He traveled the space lines from Mars to Venus to the moons of Jupiter. No captain could refuse to carry Riesling and his battered guitar. He sang of all the wonders of the galaxy. But his greatest song was of the sight he would never see. The green hills of Earth. Tonight, Dimension X has presented The Embassy, a story by Donald A. Walheim, as adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Joseph Julian was heard as Broderick, Barry Kroger as Graphius. Your narrator was Norman Rose. Music by Albert Berman, engineer Don Abbott. Dimension X is produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King. <laughs>